Shalom, shalom, and welcome. I want to thank God so much for the opportunity that you would yet once again join us, even as we share the word of God and minister on the platform of gratitude for dominion. I want to thank God so much for his word that is sure, his promises that are righteous, and his word that will never fail. The truth of the matter is anyone who puts their trust in God, they shall never be put to shame. David says, I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. I want to assure you that as it was with him, so shall it be with you. What you need to do is to trust in the Lord. Isaiah 26 verse 3, the scripture says that thou, O Lord, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In other words, when our minds are stayed on God, we are guaranteed perfect peace. We are guaranteed tranquility in our hearts. A matter of fact, Paul puts it this way in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7 that we should not be anxious for anything but in everything I want to underline the word there in everything 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 means everything I don't know why I'm emphasizing it but somebody needs to hear that in everything by prayer with thanks Giving Again, you can underline the word thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, that's verse 7, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So the clarity of the word is let us not be anxious. Let us not worry. Let us not carry unnecessary burdens. Let us be without care so that we can allow the Lord Jesus Christ Christ to pray, play the role that he has said he would play. Uh, we cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. But when we do this with thanksgiving, the scripture says his peace that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So that whatsoever thing will come in the form of worry, in the form of fear, in the form of intimidation and panic attacks, they will be kept off your heart. Why? Because the peace of God is reigning there and it's placing a sentry and a girding over your heart. I want us to go to the scripture that we read and that will form the key exegetical text in our uh, presentation in this season and time as we read the word of God. And I believe that God is going to show himself strong on our behalf. And the text is Galatians chapter 3 uh, from verse 12. And we're just laying some foundations. We'll be speaking for some really long time on gratitude for dominion. We will handle the matters of gratitude, the place of thanksgiving and praise in God because I believe in these end times we need to see the rising of a Judah company. Judah in Hebrew means Toda, which is a word thanks. And Judah was named thanks because the mother said this time i will thank god i will praise god i have had different types of expectation i've been disappointed but this time i will praise god and i want to tell you the truth if you put your trust in many things systems men the institutions we have you will inevitably and invariably fail but when you put your trust in the lord and thank him it will open a portal of blessing and favor both in now and in the days ahead listen to what the bible says in galatians chapter 3 verse 12 it says and the law is not of faith in other words you cannot equate the law to faith. Faith is a superior principle. Faith is higher. It's a dimension higher. It is a place that causes us to walk in friendship with God. In Hebrews 11:6, the Bible declares very clearly, without faith it is impossible to please God. For whosoever must come before him, whoever comes before him, must believe that he is and that he, God, is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And so I pray that you will be one of those who will seek 
God by faith in this time. It says, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So if you're going to choose to live by the law, you have to keep every dot, every tittle. You have to not miss out an iota. You have to fulfill every bit of it, which scripture establishes is basically an impossible feat. It goes on in verse 13 to say, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse himself for us. For it is written, cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. And the reason is this, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through Faith. So everything we're going to receive by the Spirit, through the Spirit, including the promise of the Spirit, is by faith. We appropriate the blessing of Abraham by faith. And so I pray for you that as we share and we explore the depth of the grace that God has given for us to walk in dominion so that we can appreciate what God has already done for us, what he has accomplished for us. The challenge with us is many a time we do not appreciate what God has already done. And beloved, God has done amazing things already. He has done so much for us. We cannot tell it all. It is just amazing. When you begin to appreciate the reality of what God has finished for us, done for us, assigned us already, then you will begin to be grateful and thankful and you will not be disturbed by your environment no matter how harsh or intimidating the circumstances might be, you will be focused on God and you will receive from him what he has spoken. And my prayer for you is you begin to experience the supernatural releases of God upon your life in this season like never before. One of the challenges that the children of Israel had when they left Egypt and they went on to the promised land is they did not acknowledge what God had done for them. They did not give him thanks. And there's a very interesting principle that Paul speaks to the Romans and he says in chapter 1 uh, from verse, of course if you begin reading from uh, verse 16, 17, 18 and 19 there it is painting the picture of who God is and how his invisible qualities have been um, made manifest by the things that have been revealed and that we see and that we attest to daily in creation. Uh, but verse 21 goes on to tell us that because men did not acknowledge God or give him thanks, their foolish hearts have been darkened and because of that, they have ended up in depravity of mind and God has given them to their own last. I pray that we will learn to acknowledge God. Every seed of wickedness that is sown in the hearts of men, it flourishes in an environment where we do not acknowledge God and where we do not give him thanks. Every form of fear, every form of unbelief begins to manifest when we don't acknowledge God and we don't give him thanks. It doesn't matter the manner of wisdom that you have experienced that God has revealed to you. It doesn't matter the weight of revelations that you carry. It really doesn't matter the miracles and the demonstration of the power of God you have witnessed. It doesn't matter who you are connected to. You may be a father or a brother or a sister or you are closely associated to a man that God has used in intense ways. Or it might just be you that God has used in times past. But as long as you do not acknowledge God and give him thanks, the Bible says your heart becomes foolish and then it becomes darkened. And then every evil thing begins to flourish and to manifest. And that's what happened to the children of Israel. When they left Egypt, they had seen great demonstrations of the power of God. Single-handedly, God delivered them with a mighty hand. They did not mean a deliverance in the sense of a human being coming um, to deliver them as such. Yet 
God, yes, God used Moses as a channel and a conduit. But it was very plain that literally God had come down amongst men. He humbled Pharaoh. He embarrassed him in the sight of all the Egyptians. Ten plagues hit Egypt and impoverished them. The Israelites plundered them after plague after plague, whether it was the Nile turning to blood, whether it was frogs jumping up on everybody on the uh, beds, on the pots, in the tables, wherever the people of Egypt were, frogs were there, but there were no frogs where Israelites were in Goshen. Uh, whether it was the locusts or the mosquitoes, the lice, gnats, as the Bible says in the King James Version, whether it was hailstones so big as tennis balls and people's heads literally falling on the people and the animals and crushing them, whether it was boils and diseases, darkness for three days, you could feel it in your hands. Locusts, so many that literally covered the light of the sun that you could not know whether it was daylight or it was night. And all these things happened in Egypt, but none of it falls in Goshen. And God makes a clear distinction. The Bible even tells us that not even a dog puts out its tongue in stress or in a challenge of that nature. But deep down in the hearts of the people, they refused to acknowledge God. And because they did not acknowledge God, the Bible says their foolish hearts were darkened. And so when they left Egypt, they had murmurings and grumblings. They had no faith. They had lots of fear. Why? Because they were not acknowledging God. The Bible says the pillar of cloud was following them by day to protect them from the hot desert sun. The pillar of fire was keeping them by night to keep them in warmth. They had these emblems right beside them, but they did not not acknowledge God. They had seen the power of God to part the Red Sea and they walked on the dry land and they saw the Egyptians coming after them and God causing their chariots to drive with difficulty and get stuck and they saw the Red Sea punish the Egyptians and cover them and literally destroy an entire army. Right in the wilderness, they were provided for by God. I'm amazed at how this happened. It is so, so crazy to think that you can see so great a thing that God has done and still turn back and still refuse to hold on firmly to the word of God and go back to Egypt and claim we want to go eat our leeks, we want to eat our watermelon and our garlic back in Egypt. It is madness at its best. But I came to look at the scripture and I discovered it can happen to anyone. These were not lesser more mortals than us. They were just the same way we are. And many other times you and I fall back into this foolishness, get into the place where our hearts are darkness. God have mercy on us. And so when our foolish hearts become darkest, we do not acknowledge God. We do not give thanks. We do not count our blessings. We do not name them one by one. And we miss out on what God is doing. I pray that God will help you. I pray that God will help me. That we may refocus on God and acknowledge him in everything we do. Especially in these end times. Because the Bible says clearly, difficult days are ahead of us. Oh God, help us. Help my viewers. Help the people that are following these programs that our hearts will not be darkened. That we will acknowledge you. That we will give you thanks. That we will live for you. That we will honor you. That we will practice the presence of God and walk in the reality of your grace and experience the manifest wisdom and the glory of God released in our lives through us in this season and experience the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ in our season as we worship you. Oh God, we pray because we know you will answer and you will show yourself strong on our 
behalf. So let's get back to the scripture. We have been laying some foundations that we have understood um, some very important things about dominion. That when God creates man and places him on the uh, Garden of Eden, he speaks blessing over him. And then he says that man would be fruitful, number one. He would, number two, multiply. In other words, increase or, so to speak, duplicate what God has put in his life. Number three, that he would replenish, uh, which is a dimension, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, uh, replenishing has a dimension of restitution, restoration, uh, bringing back to the fullness, bringing back to flourishing, which has a connotation that uh, man's responsibility is to make sure that the thing that God has begun is sustained, is taken to the next level, is not diminished, and if there's any diminishing, he's able to raise the standard up. And when God blesses you with that capacity, that means you are enabled, you are empowered uh, to succeed in that measure. Number four, he is told that you may subdue it, subjugate it, you may bring order on the earth. If you do these four things, then you are implementing or you are having dominion on the earth. And so man then is called for dominion. That is the mind of God uh, for man. Uh, but we know the Bible story, man falls and sins and now God is restoring him and he chooses a channel uh, of Abraham all the way to Jesus and here when Jesus comes he's the son of God for God so loved the world that he gave his only one and begotten son so that we you whosoever believeth in him should not perish but would have everlasting life that is what we receive in Christ Jesus but we don't appropriate this blessing by going back to the law it is not by do's and don'ts it's not by omission or commissions as it were it is by faith by trusting in the complete work of christ by leaning on what he has done by appreciating and acknowledging that what he did is a perfect work to get us redeemed it what he did has paid the price for our healing for our cleansing so that even when you begin to understand or to discover that there are things that are affecting you generationally there are sicknesses that are generational whether they uh, manifest in the form of genetic diseases and they come as cancers or uh, they manifest from generation to generation as leukemias and diabetes and all these things uh, that are picked up from the genes as it were uh, whether it is curses and excess that was spoken in previous uh, generation when we come to Christ and acknowledge the perfect work of Christ, then we stand on the promises of God and we place a demand and we take by force. That's what we said last time. We take by force, by faith, because faith is a force. Faith is a fact and faith is an act. When you come to God by faith, faith has action power faith has hands and these hands go into the spiritual realm to lay claim of what god has released for you and he takes it and brings it and manifests it in the natural realm what faith does in the spirit it begins to do what i call the manufacturing business so when we go by faith and we pray then we are manufacturing in the spiritual realm and the hands of faith will go into what is manufactured in the spiritual realm and bring and manifest it to us in the natural realm because we have believed God we are standing firm on God and we believe his word and in the process of time it will manifest we will walk in it and leave it and see the goodness and the glory of God. And that's the principle of exercising dominion 
on the face of the earth. Abraham was called a friend of God because he did not stagger. I pray for you that you will not stagger. I pray for you that you will not grow weary. You will not grow weak. You will not grow tired. You will not give up. You will not throw in the towel. You will not feel it is too much to move forward, but you will acknowledge God in everything you do and wait on him, trust in him, and see his favor and his glory manifesting in your life in this season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My prayer for you is you will experience God like never before. You will experience his favor like never before. You will experience his glory like never before. Let the power of God be upon you right now. May you believe God to see healing in your life, healing in your family, healing in your business, because God is able to do far beyond what we think or ask. Or imagine. Uh, we've said five things about dominion. Dominion is a principle. It is the highest principle that we have been given to live by on the face of the earth. And so when you exercise dominion, when you take your place as a king, as a priest, as one who has been bought with a price and choose to glorify God even with your body which are all his in the first place and you walk in God with an attitude of gratitude you guarantee that that which God has spoken over your life begins to take effect and so whatever thing you speak begins to manifest and bring forth fruit the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 uh, that the word of God is active it is a lot. It is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword because it cuts body and soul, spirit and body, bone and marrow. It separates things. That's what I'm simply saying. That's what the Bible says. And it is an active designer of the hurt and the intents of the soul. And so when the word of God comes in, it brings into action in our lives the principles of dominion and we are able to see God manifesting and the power of God revealed. And so the principle of dominion is higher than and we have to walk in this thing. Uh, number two thing about dominion is it must be possessed. You must Take it. That's why we said it's a forceful thing. It is not a passive thing. You don't just sit and it comes. The kingdom of God, you have to press into it. You have to take it by force. In the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Uh, number three, dominion must be personalized. You must understand it is a personal matter. Faith is a personal matter. It is a relationship between you and God. It must be cultivated in a personal way. You must make personal sacrifices. And before it is a pattern. These personal things you must do, you must personally fast, you must personally pray, you must personally give. They are things you must sacrifice so you can enter into what God has for you, more so in this season of our visitation and finally number five which is very important is dominion is a process and so it is a journey that we are on we are growing in rank we are growing from glory to glory from one level to another faith to faith from one dimension to another dimension one level to another level and we are growing in the things of God. Now, what will help us to develop in the process and to develop the pattern and create the rhythm is we must acknowledge God in all our ways. We must be ready uh, to acknowledge and give him thanks. It's so critical, it's so important. The moment we lose the place where we acknowledge God is and we begin to look at the negativity, we look at the defeatist, we end up having a defeatist 
attitude, then the enemy will wallop us. The enemy will convince us that God has forsaken us. The enemy will cheat you that God's purposes for your life will never come to pass. You will begin to think that God has forgotten you. God does not have a mind uh, to do you well. Uh, you will begin to think just the same way the, e the Israelites began to think that God had left them. They had to try and create their own God. I mean, is amazing. You have a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and as all this is still there with you, you are busy creating a golden calf. And the presence of God is round about you. The pictures of deliverance, the things that you were favored with by the Egyptians, given the gold and the silver, those same things that you know God favored you with, you create a golden image and say, this is your God. You know, God, when he came down, rather when Moses came down and, and saw all these things, and God told him, now take that golden calf and burn it down to ashes and mix it with water and give the Israelites to drink. I mean, God was not amused to be made like a calf. He doesn't eat your God. If you say that is supposed to be the God who brought you out of Egypt, bringing me down to a golden calf. The point I want us to appreciate here is the reason why they missed God God and they sunk so low is the same principle we just addressed earlier on that their hearts became foolish and their hearts became darkened because they did not acknowledge God and they did not give him thanks. Thanksgiving is one of the keys for us to step into our dominion in this season. It's one of the keys that will give us grace to overcome the devil every time because with gratitude comes the place where our faith is always alert and active in this season in this year 2021 i want us to appreciate what god says in psalm chapter 50 verse 5 god is saying gather all my saints together those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice and verse 13 gives us the picture of what kind of sacrifice we're supposed to give to God. He says, whosoever offereth a sacrifice of praise. And so we need to give God a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And then verse 14, and will call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver. So God is ready to deliver. God is ready to show himself strong on our behalf, but he's waiting for us to give him a sacrifice of thanks. A sacrifice of thanks is when you acknowledge him and irrespective of what you feel, what you see, what you perceive, what you hear, what they say, which may be contrary to the word of God, your faith kicks in because as you begin to thank God, God allows you acknowledging him to bring light into your life, to bring light and life and blessing into your life and allows his wisdom to saturate your life so then you're not misled, you're not carried away. That's why men and women of faith, they may look foolish to the world, but they are wise in kingdom matters and they never slacken, they never fail. They will always obtain what God said they will obtain. And I pray for you that that will be your story. But then I want to look at verse 23 in that same chapter 50 of Psalms and it says whosoever offereth thanksgiving and praise he glorifieth me said the Lord and he that ordereth his steps aright, him shall I show the salvation of God. Now, God wants to move us into another level. God wants to show himself mighty on our behalf. In this year, 2021, I want to guarantee you that there will be difficulties. There will be challenges. These are the perilous days. The evil day is not coming. The evil day is already here. There is a lot of wickedness that is brewing. Satan is gathering momentum. The sin uh, and iniquity 
cup is continuing to flow and even overflow. Judgments are being sanctioned against many people, against communities, tribes, and different ethnos on the earth. The nations of the world are calling forth damnation and judgment upon themselves because they have not acknowledged God or given him thanks and walked in darkness and they have empowered demonic entities in their lives. And so people are beginning to receive just rewards for their sin and their wickedness. But those who trust in God, those who believe in God, it shall come to pass, the scripture shall come alive with the life, that unto you who fear my name, says the Lord, shall the son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings. May that be your story in this season. And when the righteousness of God, when the healing of God begins to manifest in your life, that's when you begin to experience supernatural, glorious manifestations of his presence in your life. When you thank God, there are several things that happen. Psalm 92 tells us this way, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord God Most High, to talk about his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness in the night. But when it talks about all these things, then it goes into a mode of telling us the pictures. The wicked cannot succeed in your life. Wickedness and sin cannot thrive where the righteous are. The righteous will always succeed. They will always blossom. They will always thrive. Uh, the wicked will be judged. They will be in slippery places uh, because they don't acknowledge God. They don't look up to God. But by the time you get to verse 10, David then goes on to say, but my horn, Shall God exalt like the horn of a unicorn? Some version says like a wild ox. In other words, the symbol of my power, the symbol of my authority, the symbol of my strength, because horns in biblical times are a picture of strength, of authority. That's why they used to use horns to mark seasons and changes of seasons. They were markers of announcements. Every time they would blow a horn, which is known as a shofar or a trumpet, it was a marker of a new event. It was to signal people to go into the promised land, to take their victory, to go to a place of worship, to enjoy the fullness that God had provided for them. It was a proclamation, a declaration. So horns will mark changes of seasons and times. And David is saying, by virtue of my praises to God, by virtue of my thanksgiving to God, my horn, the symbol of my strength and authority is going to be lifted up high. May that be your story also in this season as you try him and as you look up to God. But it says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So fresh oil is at port. In other words, you go into new levels. You move into another dimension. You don't lack. Uh, oil creates uh, moving forward. It prevents wear and tears, makes things run smooth. Oil is an energizer. Oil uh, creates capacity for light and fire to burn. And so it com provides continuity. It is a healing substance. It protects. It penetrates. And so when the oil of God is upon your life, there are things that begin to shape up in the way God has ordained. Oil will separate. It will consecrate by anointing you into offices of priesthood, of kingship, of prophecy. You will enter into your place because the Oil has marked you up. And so Thanksgiving prepares you then to enter into what God has ordained for you. And I pray that indeed your horn shall be lifted. I pray that fresh oil shall come upon your life. If you continue reading the scripture, it says the righteous shall flourish like the palm trees. He shall flourish like the cedars of Lebanon. In other words, there are things that God sets in motion in our lives when we are full of thanksgiving and gratitude. It sets us up for dominion. That's why we must be grateful. That's why we must be thankful. That's why we must celebrate honor and worship God. There are so many testimonies waiting to be lined up so you can speak of the goodness and the mercy and the favor of God. But you must get into the place of 
thanksgiving of honoring God, acknowledging him, giving him a sacrifice of thanksgiving because you're going to begin to unlock doors into things you never thought possible in this particular season and time. And I pray that this season shall be for you to activate your faith and walk in the fullness of the blessings of Abraham. I'm wishing you peace and prosperity, health and wealth, welfare, that you will be well fed, be whole, complete, have nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken. May the hand of God be upon you. May the favor of God be upon you. May you genuinely walk in dominion and experience the fullness of God, dominion over sickness and diseases, dominion in seeing your family, your immediate family, your children, your spouse born again because you're taking your rightful place in the kingdom of God. May you see the blessing of God like nothing else. If you've been through hardship, just acknowledge God. Just give him thanks. See things begin to turn around to the glorious praise of his holy name because our God is faithful and his promises will never ever fail. I love you with the love of the Lord and I wish you the blessing of God. Keep on pressing forward. Keep on believing God. Good things are ahead of you and God will indeed show himself strong on your behalf in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you.